here is the first look at today's question, which is question 11. And we're given a little bit of blurb about the people in the photograph to the right here and the significance they brought to modern physics. Down here, we are told that Chadwick had discovered the neutron and in his experiment, an alpha particle was absorbed by a beryllium-9 nucleus and a neutron was emitted. This information will help us answer part one and part two. Before I start answering part one, I first want to draw your attention to page 79 of the Formula and Tables book. In particular, we will be looking at the elements beryllium, carbon-12 and helium. In part one, we're asked to write the nuclear equation for this event. Okay, so we have an interaction of beryllium-9 nucleus interacting with an alpha particle, which is the equivalent of a helium atom nucleus in nuclear physics. So these two interact with each other, so they will form the left-hand side of this nuclear equation. And we have a total atomic number of 6 and a total mass number of 13. We are told that a neutron was emitted, so on the right-hand side of the equation, we must include it, as you can see here. The neutron does not change the overall atomic number on the right-hand side, so we need an element with atomic number 6 to balance the equation. Therefore, the only element which satisfies this equation is the carbon-12 atom, which has an atomic number of 6, which you can see here. And you can also total that the mass numbers are 13 on on both sides but also the atomic numbers they equal on the left and right hand sides balancing the equation where do you get your marks you will get three marks for each correct atomic element on the left hand side you'll get three marks for the carbon 12 atom and the three marks include having the correct mass number the correct atomic number and also the correct labeling of that element finally you'll get two marks for the neutron Okay, so moving on to part two, we're asked to calculate the increase in kinetic energy during this event. Now, in this question, we are looking at mass energy conversion, i.e. the reduction of overall mass from this reaction will be converted into energy. For this, we will need the formula E is equal to mc squared under mass energy equivalence, which can be found on page 63 of your formula and tables book. Also, in order to use this formula, we will need to use the value for the speed of light in a vacuum, which can be found on page 47 of your Hormone Tables book. Our goal in this question is to find E, the energy. We already know what C stands for in this equation, to be 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So all we need to calculate in order to calculate E in its entirety is M, which corresponds to the change in mass. Writing down this formula in your answer booklet in the exam will get you three marks. So how do we calculate the change in mass? Well, the event is that we have a beryllium atom and a helium atom, and they come together and they join to give us a carbon atom, in particular a carbon-12 atom, and a neutron. So how do we calculate the mass for all of these different atoms? In order to calculate these masses, we have to use the periodic table, which can be found on page 79 of the Formula and Tables book. This should be a page that you're familiar with from part one of this section of our question. Note that the mass of each atom is in unified atomic mass units. So in order to convert each element into kilograms, which is the SI unit for mass, we'll go to page 47 again of the Formian Tables book to note this value U, which stands for the Unified Atomic Mass Unit. I'm also going to note the proton mass over here, and you'll see why later on in the video. Okay, so the products in this event are beryllium and helium. So the total mass of the products is just going to be their sum. I'm going to note that these little m's that I have in subscript form just denote that I'm talking about the mass of these atoms. Okay, so we know that beryllium is 9.01 unified atomic mass units and helium is 4.00 unified atomic mass units and their sum gives us the total mass of the products which is 13.01 unified atomic mass units. Now we're going to have to convert that into kilograms which we will use this conversion here. Remember, this is the value for you. Okay, so what is this value? We're going to get up our calculator. And we have 13.01 times 1.661 times 10 to the power of minus 27. And when you're using scientific notation, it's best to use brackets instead of this multiplication symbol here. And we get this value here, which I will round because there's so many decimal places here. And we get that the total mass of the products is 2.161 times 10 to the power of minus 26 kilograms. 
Now moving on to the total mass of the reactants, which we have the mass of a carbon-12 atom and the mass of a neutron. Now the mass of a carbon atom is going to be 12 unified atomic mass units, but the mass of the neutron, which is interesting, is just equal to the mass of the proton, and we know this in theory. And all we need to do now is just substitute in our values, since we know the mass of the proton from the formula tables book. Now we've substituted in our values, and all we have to do now is put them into the calculator. We have 12 times the unified atomic mass unit, which is 1.661 times 10 to the power of minus 27, plus the mass of the neutron, which is equivalent to the mass of the proton, which is 1.67 times 10 to the power of minus 27, which is equal to 2.1602 times 10 to the power of minus 26, which when rounded to three decimal places gives us a value of 2.160 times 10 to the power of minus 26 kilograms. Now the total change in mass here is equal to the total mass of the products minus the total mass of the reactants because we are looking at a reduction in mass and an increase of kinetic energy. That is the conversion. So the total mass before this interaction will be greater than the total mass after this reaction. Using the values we calculated previously, we have 2.161 times 10 to the power of minus 26 kilograms minus 2.160 times 10 to the power of minus 26 kilograms. Therefore, our final change in mass gives us 1 times 10 to the power of minus 29 kilograms after we take this difference. In the marking scheme, you will get three marks for this answer. And all we have to do now is calculate the change in kinetic energy. Taking out our formula e equals mc squared, let's substitute in our values. And we can now use the calculator to calculate this final answer, which gives us this nice answer for the value of our energy to be 9 times 10 to the power of minus 13. Remember, this answer must be in units of energy, which is the joule, and that final answer will get you three marks. Okay, so for the next part of our question, we're told that Geiger is best remembered for co-inventing the famous invention of the geiger muller tube, which is what will be the focus for these two parts of our question. So in part three, we are told that a geiger muller tube and a solid state detector have the same function, and we're asked, what is this function? And to put it simply, it's just to detect ionizing radiation and this will get you three marks for just stating this. A solid state semiconductor detectors detect radiation by employing a semiconductor material as a detecting medium, whereas a geiger muller tube uses an inert gas as a detecting medium. And that's basically the difference between the two of them, but they do have the same function, which is what we stated right here. In part four, we're asked to describe with the aid of a label diagram the principle of operation of a detector of this sort. Okay, so here is my label diagram here, and I put in abundance of labels just to drill home my point. If you do not include a diagram with labels, you will lose one mark. Now the main points in the diagram are we have the gas at low pressure with the central anode. We also have this thin mica window here. We have the power supply, which supplies the voltage and we also have the counting circuit, okay? Now, here's the description which will get us the bulk of our marks. This detector operates as follows. So radiation passes through the thin mica window and it ionizes the argon gas inside producing positive ions and electrons. This little explanation here will get you your first three marks. Your next three marks will come from this explanation here. Due to the large positive potential, of the central anode, electrons are accelerated to it, ionizing further atoms, causing an avalanche effect. Three marks. For your final three marks, you have to say that the electrons reaching the anode cause a pulse of current in the external circuit, and then a counter, which you can see in the diagram, that can then count the pulses. That will get you your last three marks. Now, there are two other options which are acceptable in the marking scheme, the semiconductor geiger muller tube and the gold leaf electroscope. In part five, we're asked to describe with the aid of a label diagram, the gold foil experiment. So I've provided the diagram here. Now, if you do not include your diagram, you will lose one mark. And make sure you do label that diagram because it does specify. You will lose marks if you don't.
Your main components in the diagram will be your alpha source, your gold foil target, and also your detector. But I have included even more labels than that concerning what happens to the alpha particles as they go through the gold foil. Are they deflected, undeflected, or re even reflected back through the gold foil? And these will help with your explanation. As they say, a picture says a thousand words. So take care of your diagrams. They will help you out. Now onto the description, which will get you the bulk of your marks. We have here that alpha particles were fired at a very thin sheet of gold foil. That will get you three marks. And the alpha particles could be detected by small flashes of light, key phrase, that they produced on a fluorescent screen, which is also the equivalent of a detector. And that will get you three marks as well. In part six, we're asked what observations were made during the experiment. Three observations were made during this experiment in particular, and they concern what happens to the alpha particles as they go through the foil. So it was observed that most alpha particles were undeflected and they passed straight through the gold foil. Some were deflected also through small angles, but a very small number were turned back through angles greater than 90 degrees. Each correct answer will get you two marks each, giving a total of six. In part seven, we're going to interpret these observations made in part six in order to conclude the structure of the atom. Rutherford came to the conclusion that the atom is made mostly of empty space, but there is a solid center, the nucleus, which has a positive charge. Stating this conclusion in its entirety will yield three marks. Before moving on to the next section of our question, I just want to give your attention to page 59 of the Formula and Tables book, in particular to the equation E equals HF, which is, of course, the energy of a photon. In part eight, we're asked, how did Niels Bohr improve Rutherford's model to explain line emission spectra? So the first thing you like to explain is that Bohr proposed a model describing that electrons are arranged in orbitals around the nucleus which represent discrete energy levels. This will give you your first three marks. Now for your next three marks you can either explain that a photon is emitted when electrons move between energy levels or you could state that the frequency of the emitted photon depends on the difference in energy of the orbits in which the electron has traveled with the formula hf is equal to em minus en. So in this case, the electron has traveled to orbit m from orbital n, and as it travels from back from orbital m to orbital n again, because the electron will be unstable in this new orbital, it'll want to go back to the orbital in which it came from, it will emit a photon of light of this frequency in the difference of the energy levels. And stating either this sentence or this sentence will earn you three marks.